Welcome to the February the 24th, 1998 taping of It Happened in Grand Prairie. As we bring you the history of our city, some of the people that have helped to make that history, and some that are continuing to make history on a daily basis. This is our history tape number 329. And this is the closing interview in our very wonderful Black History Month. And we have a very special lady with us today. She is endeared to many people in Grand Prairie, Texas for her wonderful work through the school system and through many other avenues. And we're pleased to introduce to our viewing audience, Dr. Marva Dixon. Thank you so much for having me. Welcome to the set. We're so excited that we finally have you captive here. Uh, Marva, it is wonderful to have you on the set to get you to share your life with us and this very special documentary that we're doing today. And if you would look out into your camera now and tell us a little bit about the real Marva Dixon, beginning with your parents. Give us your genealogy and uh, give us your mother's maiden name and establish yourself with us genealogically. Okay, thank you very much. And I do have a very dear picture with me. Oh, so wonderful. Let's show I'm and tell going that. To show you my picture of the nine people who are very, very important to me. The first two being my parents. I am one of seven children going to Alma Parker and Vernon Thomas. Uh, both of my parents are natives of North Carolina. North Carolina. That's correct. I was born in a small town on the East Coast, a little town called Murfreesboro, North Carolina. Uh, it is approximately 15 miles from Virginia, so I always call myself a person split between North Carolina and Virginia. That is true. Uh, it is also in an area called the Roanoke Chowan area. Okay. Um, my uh, mother's background consists of um, a, a trace to uh, the black-footed Indians there, so How exciting. I was very, uh, very pleased uh, to be able to learn just a few years ago a lot about my, my mother's background at least. So uh, she is from Murfreesboro in a little town called Ely Town right outside of Murfreesboro, North Carolina. Okay. I have five sisters and brothers. Would you like to name them? I have my oldest brother who is a retired Air Force man. His name is Walter J. Thomas. My sister who now lives in Middleton, um, D.C., Maryland, right outside of Maryland, is named Jet, Jeanette of Red. Next to that is the sister that everybody hated when we were growing up. Uh, she was the cook of the family, the cleaner of the family, but everybody loved Phyllis because she was the person, aside from my mother, that took care of us. Uh, the person that serves as my twin is my brother, Larry Thomas. Mm -hmm. We are the same age for 10 days. Yeah, Absolutely. How exciting. And uh, I am the middle child, and okay. truly I am the middle child because I create the balance in my family. Um, my knee, we call in North Carolina, the knee baby is Gail Thomas. Okay. Um, she is now Gail Curry and resides with me here in Grand Prairie. And the baby of the family is Pamela, and she was the baby. We always said by the time my mother and father got to the seventh one, they got really tired. So Pamela got away with a lot of things in my family. I bet she was spoiled, wasn't she? She really was. Uh, uh, my father is also one of three in his family, and most of his family uh, lived in uh, Newport News, Virginia. They were known as uh, fishermen at that time. Oh, that is great. Yeah. All right, now, Marvel, when you were born over near the East Coast and started to school, tell me about uh, starting to school in your early years, and if you had a a special teacher or a mentor or someone in the family that was real special like a grandparent or someone that really encouraged you to uh, uh, to succeed? I began my young years in education at a school called Riverview uh, Elementary School. It was at that time a segregated school. I attended my first seven years at uh, River School 
walked two miles to and from school. Oh my. Uh, up and down a hill. And I guess the inspiration there were both my parents. Uh, all that I am, aside from Jesus Christ, I owe to my mother and father. Uh, because even though it was very tiring going to school, um, walking those two miles, uh, she would always say, where there's a will, there's a way. And my father would always say, don't start something that you cannot finish. Well, you had two good philosophies right absolutely, there. Absolutely, absolutely. Oh. Um, like many of the youth in my hometown, during the summer I, I would visit New York City and Philadelphia. And so when I started school at the eighth grade, freedom of choice became a reality in, mm -hmm. in Hereford County. Uh, I chose at that time, against my parents' will, to attend the then um, formerly white school that we would call yes. uh, for one year. And I guess it was during that year, Ruthie, that I, many of the principles and philosophies that have driven me regarding education started. Uh, it was a very tough year. That was a tough one year. Very tough one year mm -hmm. because I realized that um, there are injustices. We, we yes. were poor, we, um, but we had a lot of pride that my parents placed in all of the children. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to go to school. I wanted to go to college. Yes. And I knew in order to do that, I needed to get an academic scholarship, and that was not a reality at that, at, place. At that time. So I transferred in the ninth grade back to a, a school called Calvin Scott Brown. And I have to tell you that um, in the many years that I've graduated from Calvin Scott Brown, it was only during this summer that I realized that C.S. Brown was the first black high school in the state of North Carolina. It was, isn't the that first exciting? black high school. Uh, very powerful history yes. uh, behind that school. Yes. I attended C.S. Brown four years, some of the best years of my life. Uh, I participated in um, cheerleading. I was a uh, majorette. In fact, my team uh, won first place as majorettes. And I did the one thing that I felt would make my parents proud I graduated valedictorian of my class Yes, and was uh, offered two scholarships, okay. one to the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill and one to North Carolina Central University, which is a historically uh, black college. And uh, the second probably most impressionable thing um, faced me at that time, and I realized how important the counselor in a school was. Yes. I uh, was seven children, and at that time my mother was disabled. Uh, even though I had scholarships, my counselor said, your parents can't afford for you to go to the University of North Carolina Chapel Hill, even though you have a four-year scholarship. But uh, I had a drive in me, and I was determined I was going to do it. So I visited the school and saw how huge it was and the many material kinds of things that individuals had there. And yes. so I was scared. Yes. And I didn't go. Yes. I attended North Carolina Central University. And uh, uh, from an educational foundation perspective, um, North Carolina t Central taught me how to teach. Uh, I, it was a, a politic program. I, had, I attended a, a degree program in education. It was performance-based. And uh, teachers graduating from North Carolina Central were sought after all across the state. So, um, You made a wise choice. Though. I made a very wise choice. I, I don't regret it at all. Um, I graduated uh, magna cum laude, decided uh, after my second year that mm, I was in love and I wanted to get married, <laughs> and so I did get married. And the next best thing in my life happened, I, uh, I had a beautiful young son. All right. Uh, that even though I named everybody in my family, three days passed before I could name my son. And I have to tell you this story. I said, this is going to be a child that's gonna, that will be famous. Yes. And so I, I, I couldn't think of her name. Uh, he carried my father's um, image that knows anybody in our town knows a Thomas child because of that nose. Mm -hmm. And so looking through the phone book, I saw a Thomas Dixon who happened to be a lawyer and a Thomas Dixon who happened to be an attorney. 
and so I named my Tom, my son Thomas Dixon. My father's made my father's last name, and he carried my married name at that time. Um, went through North Carolina Central, um, and after I graduated, I uh, entered the real world of yes. teaching. Yes. Uh, began my first year of teaching at Parkwood Elementary School in Durham County, very prominent uh, area in the Research Triangular area, um, very advanced in terms of um, high expectations for education. And everything that I learned at North Carolina Central uh, was very beneficial. But I still had that drive yes. to go to UNC. You know, it was at that time very few African Americans that attended uh, University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, and I said I can do it. And they had a special program uh, that was an administrative program specifically designed for women. And I knew I wanted to be in charge of something, <laughs> and so I entered North Carolina Central uh, during the time that I was teaching. And let me step back a bit because. The other neat thing about uh, North Carolina Central before I left there, I, I also received my master's degree from North Carolina Central. Mm -hmm. Okay. Received my bachelor's degree in elementary education uh, with a special emphasis in mathematics. In math. Mathematics and language arts. Received my master's degree within a year's time. In fact, I started my master's degree during my senior year. And I received my master's degree in special education and counseling. And one of the powerful things about my experiences in special ed was at that time, my sister had a child who happened to be a Down syndrome child. Yes. And uh, my training and all of the research that I had done in special ed uh, told us at that time that many Down syndrome children died because they did not receive the cuddling, they yes. did not receive the nurturing that most children in a normal family would receive. And even though the doctors had told her, and I, I hope she won't mind me sharing this story, uh, but I think it's a message to many parents who have children uh, with challenging uh, behaviors or challenging uh, disabilities. Uh, but she was told by the doctors to put the child in a, in a home. <laughs> Uh, we chose not to do that. We did not tell our parents until two years later. And my nephew is now 18 years old, never had any really serious problems, uh, probably the best of the grandchildren. Yes. And so um, with love and high expectations, um, any child survived. can, su can succeed. And yes. he's going to be successful. That's so, so that special ed background that I gained from North Carolina Central assisted me. And, and later, uh, two years later, I entered a program in supervision and administration at the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill. And you got to go to Chapel Hill. I got to go to Chapel Hill. Yes. I was still scared. <laughs> yes, but uh, uh, that was one of the realizations you really needed, wasn't it? I, I, I needed that because um, I'd had a strong background from, um, from my elementary and my high school training. Um, but I needed to venture out and to learn the philosophies of, of people who didn't look like me, who, people who perhaps didn't think like me. And everything that I learned the one year I went to uh, the formerly white school, I realized that it doesn't happen that way everywhere. So yes. very positive experiences. Um, about that time and before I finished the degree plan there, uh, my husband, who is now my ex-husband, decided yeah. that um, we needed to come to Texas. Yes. Never in my wildest dreams did I think I would end up in Texas. Yes. And so I came to Texas. Um, you brought Thomas with I you. I brought my baby with me, and I have to share my let's, baby. I'm going to sidetrack yes. because he truly has been uh, someone very special. He uh, attended Arlington Schools. All right. Um, graduated from Sam Houston High School, number three in his class. All right, you need to show and tell his this picture while you're talking baby, about it. This is baby, Tommy. And he would yes. die if he would hear me say Tommy. Uh, very special individual because he was the second of two individuals from Sam Houston 
that received uh, an appointment to the Air Force Academy. Yes. So special that not only did he receive an appointment from the Air Force Academy, he received one from the Naval Academy. And, and to make a choice. Absolutely. And Westport. But the Air Force was where he wanted to go. Mm -hmm. And yes, he went to the Air Force, and by golly, he graduated with oh, honors. Oh, isn't that wonderful? We are picking that up. Isn't that lovely? And he, isn't he a handsome young man? He is and handsome. And where is he now? He is now deputy chief in charge of public affairs in Cheyenne, Wyoming. Wow. And is scheduled next year. Uh, Air Force has been extremely good to him. He's received two master's dis degree degrees from the Air Force or at the expense of the Air Force and is scheduled next year to go back to the Air Force Academy to establish a black studies department. How marvelous. Still has a connection. And your Texas. buttons are just flying oh, off. I love him. He hates when I talk about him. Everybody at school loves, no, hates when I talk about him. Yes. But he's the joy of my life and he's taught me an awful lot. Yes. Uh, he's taught me how to pay attention to details and that uh, it matters with mothers, what mothers do. So yes. I am very proud of him. He has broken the odds of what many people would say about African American males. That if you're from a single family and you happen to be an African American male, then you're destined not to succeed. Mm -hmm. And so to those of you out there who happen to be in single family homes or happen to have challenges, it can happen for you. Yes, it can. But you have to have that determination. Yes. And we have all of these other good things we need to show and tell. Yes. I uh, started school in grant, uh, teaching at Jackson Middle School. All right. First year here in Texas at Jackson Middle School. I became the teacher of the year, and I was very pleased with that. Wonderful. Very pleased with and that. And all because your ex-husband brought you to Absolutely. Texas. Absolutely. <laughs> People. Could, <laughs> could you imagine him dragging you off from North Carolina Absolutely. And, uh, to Texas? And I would watch the news and look at the map and say, I want to go home. But but Texas has been good to me. Yes. And uh, Grand Prairie has been good to me. So and from Jackson Middle yeah. School, what did you do then? From you Jackson any? Middle School, I spent four years. I went to... Uh, Bonham as an administrative intern, then was appointed principal at Dalworth Elementary School. Mm -hmm. Spent four years there, and while I was at Dalworth, perhaps uh, the most exciting thing in my life was to be elected to be chair, well, to serve on the commission on, on standards. Let's get this where the glare will not be on it when they clue okay. in on that. Uh, uh, this is a picture that I received, an award I received from uh, our state board president at that time, uh, uh, Dr. Christie. Yes. Uh, for my years on the commission, I spent five official years on the commission, the Commission on Standards for the Teaching Profession, and I always uh, compare it to the bar, the um, Passing the bar exam. Passing the bar exam, or the medical board. Yes. Because that, the commission was to education, teaching what the medical board and the bar association is to lawyers and to doctors. Oh, that is wonderful. So this oh, that is a treasured, treasured event. It absolutely all right. is. And what, is, what are all this the This is, we just received this special treat, uh, Johnson, I left Dalworth and came to Johnson Elementary School. And that's the L.B. Johnson that's, that's right it. off of Warrior Trail and Crest Brook and Stonewall and Ferndale and all of those all good places. All of those good places. And, yes. and I've got to say, Dalworth was the best school. Daniel's now, L.B.J. is now the best school. Oh, I and see. we were very pleased at the co uh, Secretary of Education, Secretary Riley. Yes. Uh, he selected LBJ to visit November 17th of this year. Yes, and you smiled a lot. I did. It was a wonderful experience, oh, yes. a wonderful experience to know that the person who helps to establish the policies and guidelines for education across this country yes. actually stepped foot in our school. That's wonderful. You have one more picture and a gavel. Yes, this is the gavel, again, that was awarded to me with a, a commission. Uh, it was awarded because for four years, the last four years of my term on the commission, I served as the chairperson. Wow. Um, uh, very proud that uh, I was a part of a process uh, that involved changing and restructuring teacher education across the state. And so what we see in schools now 
in terms of holding universities accountable for the standards for um, graduating teachers that will do no harm to children in school. The commission now replaced by the State Board of Education certification uh, helped to establish that process. Oh, well, that so is wonderful. Yeah. What experiences, and you've come a long way, baby. Yes, you? I have. And now we have, we just must call you Dr. Abdex. Tell me about that experience. Probably the most difficult in my entire life. And, yes. And not as difficult because of the process, but difficult because it occurred during a time, Ruthie, that um, many changes occurred in my life. Uh, I, within the last three years, I'd lost my, my son graduated from high school. My son got married, and I, 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 he's going to kill me. I, didn't have a, I don't have a picture of he and his wife. Yes, I have a picture of he and his wife, but my son graduated from college, got married. I lost my father. I lost my mother. And I thought, what is this war? Why, why do I need to do this? Yeah. Two most important people in my life have left me. Yeah. Um, but they are also my guardian angels. And mm -hmm. as I would drive from Denton, uh, from Grand Prairie to Denton, I would say, why am I doing this? Yeah. And, and very softly, I could hear my mother say, remember, where there's a will, there's a way. And I could hear my father said, didn't I tell you don't start anything you can't finish? Not if you're a Thomas girl. Uh -huh. And through that inspiration, uh, May of last year, I marched across and received my doctorate degree. Yes. And what was your subject? My doctorate de degree is in curriculum and instruction. My dissertation is the Texas story. It is the 1992 Texas teacher education reform, which really talks about uh, the experiences that I spent on the commission and how Texas changed the process of how we educate teachers. And what do you want to be when you grow up? I want to be just like Sally Moore. <laughs> Isn't she a role model? She is definitely my mentor. Um, uh, I want to be the, an individual that makes an impact on the lives of people. Um, I do believe I'm a child advocate, uh, and it's so important for me to live the two principles that my parents taught me, a principle of uh, honesty, and the second and most important, justice. And so uh, Sally Moore has taught me that you have to fight for equity for all children. And so I want to grow up to be just like her and one day soon retire yes. and do what the other thing is that I love to do, and that is to write. To write. And I am uh, very pleased to announce that I have two books in the making. I've, I've recently contacted uh, a publisher, mm -hmm. and I have an article uh, that includes part of my dissertation that's scheduled for publication within the next year. That is great. So uh, becoming an author and a doctor and uh, a person that loves boys and girls. I love kids. Uh, always said I wanted to have a whole house full, but and God you, only you, he only you, blessed well, me with he gave one. You a, a schoolhouse full. <laughs> Absolutely. I Absolutely. say I have six hundred and some children at my yes. school now, and I love every single one yes. of them. And all of the time that you thought all of these other schools that you passed through, Jackson Middle School, Bonham and on up to Dalworth and then to LBJ. You thought all of those were the best while you were there because you nurtured all of that along the way. Is absolutely. that not true? Well, absolutely, and, and that's a part of my, I guess, my philosophy that uh, you have to believe in whatever it is that you're about at that time. And I have to instill that in myself and I have to instill it in the people that I work with. And if we don't believe that we are the best, uh, then we cannot expect anyone else to do that. Being a campus boss, being the principal, T-H-E-E -E principal. The principal. And, uh, and getting along with all of your teachers, is that pretty tough or, or are you schooled to that? It's, it's always a challenging job. Um, the difference, I think, uh, between making it a tough job and making it a job that you love is that you care about the people and that you allow the people that you work with to be empowered. Um, no principal can run a school alone. 
That's true. And without the support of, of, of all of the positive and wonderful parents that I have and the staff, I would not trade that staff for anything in the world. But I don't do the job alone. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they tell me what to do. They think they tell me what to do, but, uh, but together we're a team and we collaborate together and um, their ideas are just as important as mine. And it is because of that type of teamwork uh, that I believe I've established at every place I've gone. Um, my expectations are high. You have about a minute and a half to look out into your camera, and I want you to talk with the young folks and the parents. If you have a message for them as a wonderful, successful uh, African American that has not only reached your potential, but you've gone far above probably what you ever thought you would do, I'd like for you to give a message. What I'd like to say to the youth out there, whether they're African American, Hispanic, irregardless of what your way of life is, that you must be driven by your principles. First, you must understand what those principles are. Hopefully, one of those principles will be that you live a life of integrity, and that integrity will be seen by the light that you shine. So let your light shine so that others will see the good work in you. Uh, be whatever you are, the best that you can be, and strive toward equity um, for anyone that you may come in contact with. Whatever you say you can do, where there is a will, as my mother would say, there is always a way. And what would you prophesy for your young son, Thomas Dixon? Oh, absolutely. Thomas Dixon will be, if not the first, the second African-American president of the United States. I have no question in my mind that he will not, if not be the president, someone that will uh, make an impact on this country. And if your Blackfoot heritage knew where you are today, wouldn't they be excited? They would be uh, excited. But they would also expect that. They would, they would think They you. would expect that. I, I, I know that of my grandmother, and I know that of my mother and my father, that they expected the best out of us. And if we didn't live up, up to it, we had to hear from them. I want to thank you for being so wonderful, Dr. Dixon. You are just a wonderful young lady, and uh, having shared your life with us, uh, I just know that it's going to be meaningful to, to someone else that watches our show. And they certainly ought to be impressed, because anyone that has been as successful as you have been, we bow three times to the East. <laughs> And thank you so much for being on the show today and ending our wonderful uh, Black History Month with a very special interview. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. And this is Ruthie Jackson reminding you that history is as we live and do.